but for me it's important to know what they've got going on in their hair. So what goes on at home creates challenges for you as a stylist. Because let's face it, they only see you every month, every six weeks, every eight weeks. So it's great that you've got them on a regimen in the salon, but it is more important for you to understand what they've got going on at home so you can understand how to help them keep the color. You spend a lot of time at school. You spend a lot of money to get your education. There's a reason you're behind the chair and you do what you do. Protect yourself behind the chair. That's what Malibu does for you. When I say I use it behind the chair, every single one of my clients starts and finishes with Malibu. It took me a long time to get board certified. What that means is that's my master's in color. There is nothing else higher that you can get certified in other than to be American board certified. One lawsuit, one client can take that away from me. So I make sure that I am covered in all aspects when I'm touching a chemical. That's where Malibu came into play with me. The first time I took a Malibu class, it was when I was studying for my American board. And I sit in this class and after I leave, I'm mad. I'm mad that there is all this information because I've been doing hair for a long time. I'm a second generation hairstylist, so I've been in a salon all my life. I was so pissed when I left because I'm like, why didn't anybody tell us this? Why are we allowed to touch chemicals not knowing what's going on on the other end of with the water? All of those horror stories that you hear on all of the forums and that you, you know you've known that one stylist that something's gone drastically wrong and the hair's falling out, chances are it was a mineral reaction to your chemical. If you take care of that ahead of time, you are covered. Cover yourself. Your job is important. You are a professional. My mom pounded it in my head in her salon. She, I mean, she was the hardest person to work for in her salon. She said to me from day one of beauty school, if you are doing something to a client that they can do themselves at home, that is not a professional service. Make sure you're keeping yourself at a professional level. Make sure you're keeping your education up because you never know what the stylist standing next to you has going on. We've got enough competition with at-home box color and the at-home ombre, that kills me. That makes me a lot of money <laughs> when I get those that come in. Um, so you need to make sure that you're up there, that you're, you're elevated. So when you take classes and you get certifications, put that up there. Let your clients see that you have actually taken the time and effort to put forth towards your education. In Indiana, we don't require continuing yet, which I think is, is horrendous um, because you've got stylists that have been behind the chair for 20, 30 years and haven't taken a class for 15, 20 years. So the fact that you guys are all here, I applaud you, that you are learning a new product, you're learning something that you can take back to your clients. So the challenge is that as the everyday life of the client gives to you, you're gonna have reds that are gonna fade. How many have problems with reds? Fading, come on, be honest, I'm behind the chair. I, I know you've all had it. They're the devil. They're the hardest to get in and the hardest to get out. It makes no sense. I'm gonna help you with that. Poor gray coverage, anybody? 80% of my clientele is covering gray, so that has recently become a huge factor in what I do behind the chair. The crystal gel and the color prepare, has, that's changed the game for me as far as formulating for my grays, so I'll let you know how that works. Your color doesn't match the swatch. You have a client come in and they pick the swatch and you formulate and then you get done and it is a completely different color than what was supposed to be on there. And then you're at the bowl saying, let's do a deep conditioning treatment, which means I'm grabbing a toner because this is not right. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you wanna make sure that they don't know. I mean, you're, you're yeah. we've all done it, we've all done it. So your blondes become dull, muddy, or brassy. Has anybody had a client call you and tell you their highlights faded? <laughs> that's my favorite. That's my favorite. And you're like, it was bleached. It didn't go anywhere. Okay. I'll tell you why that happened. So your highlights and your bleaching seem resistant. Have you ever had that client where it doesn't matter what volume you're putting in there, that stuff is just not moving? I'll tell you why. Your hair lacks shine, feels dry, and appears damaged. We've all seen that. A lot of time with damage, especially with blondes. When you have blondes that come in because their ends are more porous and their hair is light. It's all stuck together. And our first in instinct as a stylist is, oh, that's gotta come off. We've gotta cut that off. If you were to remove the minerals first, you might not have to cut that off. So if you've got those clients that are holding on to every, every centimeter of their hair, I do have one that will come in and say, oh, and a quarter of an inch off. Luckily, she's my friend. I'm like, get out of my chair. Because that is, <laughs> that is wasting my time. Somebody else could be sitting here. So for those clients, this will help you with those clients as well. Oil packets become hot to the touch. Anybody had that happen? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. That's a mineral problem, not a color problem. Your color swells coming out of the foil. So when you go back and check, you're like, oh crap. Because it's everywhere. You've got the zebra marks. Now you've got a correction on your hands. Lines of demarcation and inconsistent color. 
especially it, it, this amazes me every time a stylist does a virgin color and then you end up with a dark line of deposit in the middle the middle band of the hair that's a mineral issue that's not a color or a porosity issue that's a mineral issue also i'll show you how you get rid of that anybody seen smoke come off the hair that was an old crap moment that's a moment that makes you when i feel beautiful I mean, that's one of those moments that makes you want to quit doing hair right there. You just want to drop the brush, but I'm done. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> We've all seen it happen. All right. But luckily for me, when I was beautiful, we couldn't we couldn't refuse a ticket. This girl comes in with hair down past her waist. She wants a spiral perm. So she sits down. They've got two stylists working on it, and they're asking her, "What's on your hair? You've got color on your hair." She says, "No, no, no. There's nothing in my hair." The clients, they don't understand. They think if they haven't had their hair done in the past month, there's nothing on that hair. They're like, no, 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 I don't have anything. If you have ever oxidized the hair, unless you have completely cut it off, it is still affected. So she swears there's nothing on her hair. They get her all rotted up. We all know how long that takes. It's spiral rods rod, and it's heavy, and they're doing this. They put the perm solution on, it smokes, and the rods hit the floor. Instant chemical haircut all the way down. Had to be had to be faded in the back. She, and this was back in the day, she had used sun in when it had a metallic base. So you had your metallic salts and your perm solution. That is a chemical nightmare. A lot of box colors also have metallic salts in them. So if you are not protecting yourself and prepping the hair before you're doing a correction, you are setting yourself up for a chemical haircut. Protect your license. Hair becomes mushy and breaks off. We've all had that issue. So the number one saboteur of all chemical services is the water. It always cracks me up when a client sits down and they'll say, I have well water. And they think that's, bad, that's, that's worse than having regular water. And I'm like, you have water. It, it makes no difference to me as far as how often you're in the water, you're still in water. So well water, of course, has a high concentration of minerals, which everybody thinks is bad. It is for us. It messes with our color, it messes with the texture. However, when you have regular water, you not only have minerals, you have chlorine. So then you're dealing with a whole another issue. Then when people say they have softened water, they're like, oh, I don't need anything, I have softened water. No, you still have water. So now you have hard water, but you've added salt too. So now I have a little bit of chlorine, a lot of salt, and I still have minerals. So it, it doesn't matter what they say about their water. Water is water, and everybody touches water. So this is why this is going to be your best friend. 85% 85, 85 of the households in the U.S. have actual hard water. Depending on what region you are in the country, changes what minerals are concentrated in your water. Can anybody guess where the worst water in the country is? No. Indianapolis, Indiana, which is where my salon is. So we deal with horrendous mineral buildup. We also deal with an extremely high concentration of chlorine. When you turn on the water in my salon, you smell chlorine. When you flush the toilet in my salon, you smell chlorine. So we are constantly having to combat